Hi again then guys and welcome to another special projects replica build and this particular build has actually been requested in the past and it's a replica of the Abarth 500 and in particular the 695 by Posto or two seater and this is a much more hardcore track focused version of the Abarth 500, which is already a pretty quick car, makes a great rival to stuff like the Mini Cooper. Now this particular model does have some fairly major visual modifications, so we will go first of all to the visual tuning garage to run through what I've personally done, and there is some room for variation as you'll see. Then of course we'll go over to the mechanical setup and finally take it out as we always do to a racetrack to see what it's capable of. Now, first of all, you do have some options, as I said, as far as which parts you want to go for or not go for. I've personally opted to go for the Type B body kit, which adds, of course, primarily the chin splitter at the front and also carbon fibre side skirts. Now, technically, that doesn't actually look like the real car's body kit, but we can't get a body kit that looks like the real car. So, as I said, it's optional. You could just leave it stock, but the reason why I did upgrade it is just to make it basically feel a little more special. Now as far as the rear wing, I've actually left that with the standard wing. You do have the option to upgrade it, but that wing's kind of over the top compared to the real car. As far as the rims, you can actually get really close rims on the game to the real rims on the car. They are these 12 spoke rims set in kind of arrangements of two, and I would recommend these Oz Racing Ultra Legera rims. Now, as far as the paint of the car, you've got, again, a couple of options. I've gone for a matte colour, as you probably guessed, called Matte Grey. Pretty simple name, <laughs> explains itself. And for the rims, I've gone for Matte Dark Grey. Now, you have to unlock those colours, and not everyone has. You can get them from seasonal events, but... You can't really say when those events are going to come around or how often you're going to have the opportunity of unlocking said colour. So, if you don't have matte colours available and you still want to do this build, the next best thing that I would recommend is to go to the MG dealership and buy the MG TF160 in a colour called X Power Grey. That's an easy colour to get. There are, of course, other colour options as well, but that's a really good-looking one with a cool name that will bring you pretty close. Of course, it's not as good as the full-on matte, but not everyone has the capability to have that. Now, the brakes are stock, so we haven't painted those, but they're pretty handily colour-coded red anyway. And overall, that's it for the visuals. So we'll go over now to the mechanical stage of this setup. Now it's always nice when you're doing a replica build to be able to find not just the obvious power and weight specs but also stuff like the gear ratios. That always adds just another layer of authenticity which is really nice to have. Now I would recommend sports soft tyres but obviously you can go for whatever you want. I've opted to leave the brakes stock as we often do for more production or semi road based builds just to give it more of a feeling again of authenticity. As far as the suspension, I've lowered the ride height to 130, front and rear. The springs have increased to 550 and 3. Dampers I've left on 3. Anti-roll I've actually reduced to 2. Because you don't want to make it feel too much like a cup car or a race car. You do still want to keep that, to some degree, street feel. I've gone for neutral camber and tow, as we often do. We'll come back to the gearbox last, as we often do. As far as the diff, I would personally recommend the lowest initial torque and the highest settings on acceleration and braking, and that actually gives you really, really spot-on handling for this car. As far as the power, the actual car is running 190 horsepower. I would recommend an oil change, and then I would recommend the parts as follows, of course. The Stage 3 engine tune, sports exhaust, and intake tuning. So, pretty simple to get there. And as far as the weight, you do kind of have an option here. You will need the Stage 1 weight reduction, but you could, if you wish to, go for the body-coloured carbon bonnet, as I have. Now, the reason why I have done that, because it's not necessary, is because of the bonnet pins. The actual Biposto has a modified bonnet, and although the bonnet pins don't give it a completely authentic appearance, they do at least make it look a bit more special kind of like with the body kit. So as I said, you don't have to do that, 
but it just adds a little bit more of a hardcore track type feel to the car. And once you've done that, or not done that, you can add 40 kilos of ballast to bring us up to the actual weight of 997 kilos, which is pretty impressive for this car. And I've personally put that ballast towards the rear to improve the weight distribution, but again, you don't have to do that. Finally, for the gearbox, as I said, we are running the real ratios of the Biposto model. You want an auto setting of 143, then individual gears of 3.46, 2.13, 1.47, 1.13, and 0.92, with a final drive of 3.18. And as you can see, it pretty nicely rounds off to 420 pp, which isn't really a level that many people race at, but at least it means you can get it down to say 400 or more likely up to 425 if you need to. So that's it for the build and the appearance. Now let's take it of course out to a racetrack to see what it can do. Now this build does kind of nestle between hardcore track car but it does still have a certain level of street-esque feel to it. It's kind of like a bridge between the two. A vehicle which isn't necessarily a full-on stripped-out track day special, but at the same time is definitely more hardcore than the normal production model. Now the handling on this car is definitely the best aspect of driving it. It is wonderful to drive, it's easy to drive, and it's pretty quick as well, especially for the PP level. So, if you do decide to use this build for fun or for racing, I hope you find fun in doing so, and if you'd like to keep up with other builds like this in the future, you can click subscribe for that down below, or if you would like to see existing builds that we've already done, you can click through to the playlist at the end of this video. But for now, as always, thanks for watching.